<laughs> this is exciting, right, guys? You're on, you're on air. I'm on air. Yeah. Who did you say was here? Els and Matthew? Yeah. Hey, Els and Matthew. <laughs> How's it going? Thanks for joining us uh, on air. And, and your virtual presence is very welcome. And thanks to all of you guys as well for coming here. This is fantastic to see you. Uh, saw some of you back at ZooCon in Oxford. But some of you have not met before, which is great. Uh, so the people who see the slides that I've rehashed from Oxford, please keep your mouths quiet and pretend like they're amazing and you've never seen them before. <laughs> so I just want to give a rough talk about what's new within the Zooniverse. Uh, but I want to start that by kind of reflecting on the last year. So it's just over a year since I started work for the Zooniverse. So I think, yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> I think uh, this would be nice to just say, kind of go over some of the things that have happened. Um, so, oh, hold on. What's happening here? Can we actually start this as a talk? There. Yeah. It's been a big year. It's been a really big year. Uh, for me and for the universe. Um, when I started uh, last September, uh, there were about 14 or 15 universe projects. Uh, there are now 26 live at the moment, and that's in just one year that we've launched 10 projects, and some have retired as well. So in that respect, it's been a huge year. Um, that's growing, the universe at the moment is growing faster than it's ever grown before. It's growing at an expanding rate. If you think about it, similar to the universe, basically. <laughs> that's, how, that's how this universe is working right now. And you can see here, it's not just been a big year for the universe, it's also been a big year for the zoo, <laughs> which uh, I started last September. And you can see in this collage all the things <coughs> that have been going on across this universe, across the 26 projects, and uh, in general for citizen science for 2014. Um, in early 2014, the Zooniverse crossed the 1 million volunteers, uh, registered volunteers mark. That's outstanding. Starting just in 2007, seven years up to 1 million, we're now 1. Uh, 1 million registered volunteers, but as many of you know, you don't actually have to register an account. Uh, to take part in this universe. I'm sure you guys all have registered accounts. I'm sure you probably all have some of the first registered accounts on the platform. But there are many, many more people who have taken part in this universe that haven't ever registered an account. Um, so that number is absolutely amazing. Um, also, at just about the same point, uh, this spike happened in classifications on other projects. And I really just love to talk about this. Um, it's space work. As you can see there. And this was on uh, January the 7th in the evening. And what happened was on BBC's Stargazing Live, Space Warp was featured. Uh, so there was a call to arms for people to come and search for gravitational lensing events. Um, and this was the response. In one hour here, at the o'clock in the evening, one, over one million classifications, scientific classifications, were performed. Across this whole kind of peak of the show, that there are over two million classifications across four hours. I really want to contact Guinness just to see if this is true, but I have a feeling that this might be the highest rate of science ever performed by humanity. <laughs> I really want to check, check into that. I can't think of any other possible angle that could have this amount of science done in that period, like small period of time. Two million classifications in, in, in four hours. It would have taken uh, the scientists behind Spaceworks, about two years to have done that analysis, working non-stop. So I just think that this is this is the kind of place that we are now with this universe. In, in 2014, this is the kind of thing we can do. It's really blowing up. It's awesome. Right. Some of you at Zoom have saw this and before. Uh, this is a lovely vis visualization, and as, as with all lovely visualizations in the Zoresh, you can probably tell they're produced by Rob Simpson. Uh, <laughs> and it does look like a lovely piece of abstract art, but this is actually top. This is the top platform on Zooniverse, and this is across all the projects. And what we have here is all of these spots, all of these tiny little spots, are volunteers, zooites, guys like you, and even me. I'm in there probably one of the smaller ones, because the size of the um, circle here actually corresponds to how many comments we've made. 
Um, so I guess most of you in the room will probably be these crazy people in here who spend a lot of their time doing great work on top and maybe one of the smaller stuff here. Um, but this is, this is showing that it's not just people classifying um, on individually on scientific projects, it's a community, it's a huge community as well because not only is this showing that uh, lots of people make lots of comments, the size is, is, is correlated to how many comments you make, but actually you can see these colours, these blotches are lines joining the dots. This is people talking to each other and talk, commenting on the same subjects uh, and talking to each other. And um, yeah, you can see that uh, some of the real super users, you guys in the room especially, are talking to hundreds if not thousands of other volunteers on top. So I, I truly think this is one of the most beautiful <laughs> visualizations ever produced and it shows the kind of community we have now going on uh, in the Zooniverse. I've been using this <coughs> slide a lot. Uh, you can probably tell who built this, it was Rob Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using this to show how fantastic, along with the last one, how, how much of a large community is built up in the Zooniverse. We've got one million volunteers, we've got that talk diagram. I've been using this one that Rob built for uh, a TED talk he did at the start of the year. Um, and it shows the location of every single classification pretty much since the Zooniverse began. And you can see that it's actually there's basically dots in almost every country in the world. The Zooniverse has been used by people in almost every country in the world. I think there's maybe two countries in the world where it, people haven't taken part. And this is great. But I'm, I'm not going to use this anymore. Guys, this is the last time I'm going to use this in a talk because it doesn't truly show where the Zooniverse is just now. This is shown where it has been in the last seven years. I'm going to start using this slide, which I took um, from our Google Analytics. Now this slide here is for the last week. And in the last week, only these countries here, the ones that are in the very, very uh, light color, no one took part in the Zooniverse. Uh, I counted it up. There's something like 170 countries in the last week that people have taken part in at least done one classification or visited one Zooniverse project. Uh, and I think that is truly fantastic. Obviously, still, we're heavily weighted uh, toward the USA and the UK. But we've got plans to try and change that. Uh, one of the big things that's going on right now is the Zooniverse uh, translations. We're trying to get as many of our projects translated into as many languages as possible. So these people who are logging on from all around the world can have it in their own language and not have to do it in English. And hopefully that'll, that'll um, allow even more people to take part across the globe. So I'll give you an example here for Plankton Portal. I went into Plankton Portal here. And uh, if you want to be a translator, get in contact with me or Rob or someone at the university and say, guys, I can speak another language. I'd love to translate one of the projects. And we can give you access to this site where you choose the project. I've chosen Plankton Portal. And then, because I'm fluent in it, I've chosen Arabic. Uh, and you're just given the strings from the website. So little uh, strings of text. And you're asked to translate them into the language you know. And then you can send that data away to us. And we can translate the whole site like this. We can crowdsource the translation seems to fit with our ethos and what we did before. So if you happen to know what jellyfish life is in Arabic, or indeed in any other language, you can come on and translate it. And it's not just languages that we pre-selected. You can go on, and if there's a language not there, you can say, right, I know Swahili, or I know Gaelic, or whatever, and uh, you can translate the page into that language. Right, so that's where the Zooniverse has been in the last year. That's the kind of things that are going on and the way it's kind of expanding out. I'll give you now some teasers about upcoming projects. <laughs> so this, this picture here on the left is actually produced by the, um, uh, the University of Oxford Press Office. are very excited about one of our upcoming projects, as am I, uh, called Penguin Watch. Uh, Penguin Watch should be launching this Wednesday, uh, this upcoming Wednesday. And it essentially involves lots of imagery from nesting areas in Antarctica and some of the South Sea Islands where penguins live. And in these nesting areas, it's important to count the populations throughout the year. And before this, this was kind of like one or two guys' jobs. And there are lots of penguins. Um, 
I'll give you a little secret. You can also this is the, the URL for this is going to be penguinwatch.org. You can actually also get to this website through the URL shitloadsofpenguins.org, <laughs> <laughs> which we, which Rob has purchased the domain for. Uh, so, uh, but that was essentially the problem. Sounds like a very familiar and diverse problem, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Too much data, not enough people to do it, and a computer can't tell the difference between a penguin and a rock at the moment. But the great thing about this project and a lot of the universe projects is that hopefully by the end of it the computers will be able to tell the difference between a penguin and a rock due to the data being fed back in from, from the human classifiers into the machine learning. Uh, so that's the idea of the penguin. Watch you'll, you'll be able to log on, see these images and just mark penguins all over the picture. So hopefully it's going to be popular. Everyone loves penguins. I think the only guy I've ever met in the world who doesn't love penguins is Tom who's the uh, Lead scientist on Penguin Watch. <laughs> I think he's he's sick of them. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's had enough of them. Absolutely. So uh, so it's now our job to help Tom out. Uh, on the right here is the avatar that our fantastic uh, visual designer Heath Van Singel. I think we should give a shout out to him. Uh, has produced for one of our upcoming projects, which should be long, uh, launched in the next few weeks or month. Uh, is uh, Higgs Hunters. And it involves data from the uh, uh, from LHC, uh, from the Atlas detector, uh, at, and CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. So I'm really excited about this one because this is actually our first physics, uh, pure physics project. We've had a lot of astrophysics projects, as you guys all well know, uh, but this is the first pure physics project we're going to have, and um, it's going to show you the the events from within this detector at LHC. And you'll be able to look for decays, exotic decays of particles, like the Higgs boson. Um, so they're looking for, for, for these decays. That's what they know they're looking for. But also the exciting thing uh, about Higgs hunters is there's stuff in there they don't really know they're looking for. So it goes back to this um, idea of, of kind of serendipitous discovery, perhaps. Maybe there'll be stuff in the, in, in the Atlas data that we just didn't see coming. So I'm really excited about this. And I hope you all log on uh, and have clicks through that. Um, now, there's another thing I'm really excited about. Who's taken part in Planet Hunters before? Yeah? Yeah, most of the room. Good. Why have you guys not taken part in Planet Hunters? <laughs> <laughs> so Planet Hunters is uh, possibly my favorite universe project. I am biased, though. It's kind of what I did my PhD in. Um, Chris just gave me an evil look. <laughs> You still like that galaxy one, don't you? You're not supposed to admit to favourites. Really? No, okay. Like yes. Even I'm ambivalent <laughs> at best towards Planet Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but Planet Hunters is changing. Uh, this week, or this upcoming week, we're going to roll out <laughs> the second version of Planet Hunters. Um, and it looks amazing, let me tell you. I've looked at the demo site, it looks brilliant. It works so well, it's just fantastic. Not a lot has changed from the previous time, just, it's just a better site now. Um, it's still the same job, looking for transit uh, dips in data from Kepler. But one of the big differences is we're getting the data from the, the phase two of the Kepler mission, K2. We're going to be getting and analyzing that data at the same time as the scientists on the Kepler team at NASA. So before in Planet Hunters, the NASA team had a chance to process the data and look through for interesting stuff first. This time, you guys and everyone else on Planet Hunters is going to be racing against the NASA team to analyze the data first. And let's face facts, we're going to do it quicker. There's not 100,000 of them. So we're going to be finding stuff quicker than the NASA team from the K2 data, and that's really exciting. One of the other exciting things is that um, for the first time ever, we're going to try an educational course in the middle of uh, a live project. Uh, I actually made this course myself, so please don't be too harsh on it when you try it out. <laughs> um, but it's essentially, at the start, you'll be asked if you would like to opt in to an educational course to learn more about exoplanetary astrophysics as you take part in, in Planet Hunters. Because at the moment, on, on most universe projects, you're given a short tutorial at the start that gives you enough understanding of the task to get through the project. But we thought, well, why don't we try and give something even more. Why don't we say, right, as you're classifying, as you spend your time on one of our projects, how about you learn 
even more about the background of the science that's, that's inside the project. Uh, so that's going to be uh, the mini courses we're calling it in Planet Hunters 2 and I think we're going to try and roll that out on some other projects if, especially if it's a success on Planet Hunters. I'm really worried that no one's going to opt in, Chris reckons that loads of people are going to opt in, so we'll see what happens. One thing that's really changing in the universe recently as well is the fact that citizen science is becoming a word that I find it harder and harder to use in talks because we're not just doing science anymore. We have humanities projects. Operation War Diary is one of the most popular uh, Zooniverse projects at the moment. And we're expanding out to create even more humanities projects. Uh, we have a permanent uh, member of staff, Victoria. Some of you have met her. She's fantastic. My office mate, she's great. But I'm just saying that in case she's listening. Um, she is our resident humanities expert. Yes, we're based in an astrophysics department, but yeah, we employ a humanities expert. And we now have an ecologist as well, and many web developers, uh, statisticians, um, and recovering astronomers. Uh, but we have a humanities expert, and we're, we're, we're expanding into the humanities research uh, with this universe. Uh, here are some examples of projects that are in their very kind of early stages that we're working on. One on the left here is going to be on um, artists' notepads, notebooks from artists, uh, uh, getting us to go through and, and do uh, textual transcript, um, full text transcription on the writing that's in them, and also marking significant images. Like you'll be able to drag a circle around this, this strange headless body thing there, and then also transcribe the text that's above it. And uh, so this is this is in partnership with um, Tate. Uh, so it's very exciting. We've got lots and lots of these diaries from many, many artists uh, from across the years. And then on the right here, we have that's actually the uh, the Folger Library in Washington D.C. Um, and the, they're, they're actually called the Folger Shakespeare Library, but they have a lot of of, of manuscripts, not just from uh, Shakespeare's work himself, but from all of his contemporaries at the time. So that's going to be a full text transcription project. That's not confirmed. Not confirmed. No. Okay. Yeah, sure. In the, I've got an email about a contract. So right, okay. Probably should have announced that that project definitely happened. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just saying. Yes. <Yeah>, so. <laughs> I'm going to have words with Victoria now. <laughs> okay, so this project might happen. This is an example yeah. of the kind of project that may well happen <laughs> under our new humanities banner. Okay. Let's, let's fingers crossed that it does, because it would be a great project. And as I say, we now actually have an ecologist working for us as well. Um, if any of you have tried Snapshot Serengeti, let me see your hands in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Snapshot Serengeti is an equally average project. <laughs> 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 but, uh, we now have one of the lead scientists from, we've stolen one of the lead scientists from Snapshot Serengeti, Ali Swanson. She's now working for this universe. So hopefully she's going to be consulting with us on some more great ecology projects, especially. Right, and finally, I'd just like to leave you with where the actual universe infrastructure is going. Uh, <laughs> we're using this slide too much, aren't we, for Panoptes? It's kind of scary. It kind of looks like, OK, this is where the universe is going. This is going to be us in the next <laughs> few months. And that, I don't know if this is meant to represent Panoptes. That's kind of scary. Like, yeah, let's change that around. I so no. around, surely. The little ones, the science yeah, this the is big thing is This is you, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> guess, these are all the Galaxy Zoo volunteers. <laughs> where to? I need more data. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I got carried away there. Uh, this is Panoptes. Panoptes is the name that's been chosen uh, by our developers for the change in infrastructure that's going to be made to this universe. Now, the difference, the main difference is going to be uh, we're expanding out to the point where we're not expecting to maybe have just 26 live projects. In the next year, we're thinking more on the order of 200, maybe more, uh, and this is going to make that possible. At the moment, we get many, many proposals each year, and we could only build a few of them. We only have time to build a few of those projects, and we try and choose the ones that everyone would like the most, the ones that are most significant, uh, the ones that will work the best, but we leave a lot that we can build because we just don't have time. Panoptes is going to change this. Uh, Panoptes is going, to be, uh, is going to allow us to build projects very fast, but it's also going to allow other people to build projects on the Zooniverse platform that aren't our developers, that aren't us. Um, so in the same way that perhaps uh, an allegory I try and draw is with WordPress, but it's maybe a lot more complex than that. 
So in WordPress, you can come and you can create your own blog and you can make it look like you want, but it's all based on one platform. It's kind of that idea, but for the Zoomverse. So <clears throat> you can imagine scientists who who have you know a hundred million pictures of galaxies coming on and building their own project without our developers having to spend the time on it, or a classroom full of kids who've gone out and taken pictures of leaves, being able to come on and create a project just for their class or for their school. So that is the idea. This is what Panoptes is going to allow. Um, so I think this is the best time to actually start up a little panel discussion part with myself, Karen, and Chris. For any questions relating to any of the upcoming stuff in Zoomverse, any of the stuff I talked about, if you didn't understand Rob's visualizations, it's quite understandable. Uh, so we're, we're absolutely open and free to answer your questions for, for 10 minutes or so, and, and for the rest of the day, as you know, I'm very approachable. You can come and ask me. I might not give you a straight answer, but I'll try. And I'll try and not tell you about any projects that aren't actually confirmed uh, <laughs> for the rest of the day. So, yeah, thanks. Should, should we come and stand by you since for the live streaming you thing? Yes. Yeah. Can we can we turn it when somebody asks a question too? Uh, Is that possible? Yeah. Um, maybe Jen, do you want to volunteer to, to swivel the laptop? Is that that's a responsibility? I'm not we can quite just sure repeat, why don't we just repeat the question? We just repeat the question. No, because yeah. I want to see the people. Oh, you want to see the people. Are there questions? Before we start. No one has a question, so we just... No, but can I just say that I really love, already love the educational thing that I'm going to come to see. I will be trying to help. There's one. Yay. There we go. Thank you. Unfortunately, the honey knows all about exoplanets already, so... <laughs> yeah, I really help. Yeah. It was going to be interesting to see. We were, we were reluctant for a while because we didn't want to interrupt classifications because clearly it matters to us if people keep clicking. But um, we did... The, the Strange Galaxy Zoo survey that appeared that asked you questions about um, complicated questions about what you do about galaxies. If you remember, it had a yes, I want to ask some questions, tell, bother me about this later, or never bother me again. And we discovered that people who clicked never bother me again did more classification on average than people who were never shown the message. And so that, that allowed us to think we could interrupt a bit without. Yeah. So it was actually, but yeah, the idea was born out of a kind of three-pronged attack and a pub probably. I, know <laughs> uh, I, I kind of wanted to give something back. I'm very like keen on educating people, especially about exoplanets, because it's what I did. But just educating people in general enthuses me. And I thought we could give something more to, to the volunteers. So first of all, I thought about you know just a more of an educational guide on the site where you could go and look up the background science, not just the transit stuff the background into exoplanets. Then, but well, why don't we try and, uh, at the same time, we're kind of thinking about maybe incentivizing people to stay in classifications for longer, and, and the, this idea of, of pop-ups and, and, uh, um, and kind of notifications. I thought, well, perhaps if people know they're in a course, will they maybe stay in longer? Will they say, oh, I know the next lesson's coming up? Because at the start, you can choose how often you want the course to appear. So you can say after every 10 classifications, after, after every 100, or after every one. Or you can just go and read it. Or you right. can go read it. It'll also be available, so you can just go and read it in your own time, and not it won't affect your classifications. But I think you can draw more people to it as well. Plus, I, I found that I was using the key at the same time when I started on Galaxy, because I did not know anything about the story yeah. back then. So if more people do that, they just away from the site. So well, yeah, this, is, this is what we were thinking. Well, that's good, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. sometimes they go to sites that are, which, which yeah. is bad. Uh, and the, the final question is, does it, is, in any way, can this perhaps make someone a better classifier on the project? We're not sure on that one, but we can have a look. Does, does, we're in, in the course, I'm showing people examples of the kind of light curves you get, and, and things that aren't just planet transits, maybe like flares, variable stars. Uh, so these things are covered in the, in the site, in the field guide and stuff. You can go and look for them, but perhaps maybe not all people do. Yeah, and in the longer run on, probably not this week, next week or whenever it is, but pretty soon with Planet Hunters 2, there will be a second level of internet. Level's probably the wrong word, but there'll be a second interface that shows you things that, some people, that we already think are transits, and we ask people to confirm 
whether whether it's real or not, so sort of a second review, still done by the community. Uh, I think there, knowing a bit more about what you're looking at and what you're supposed to be looking at will really help. Yeah, Plus exoplanets are cool. Exoplanets are cool. Even from a galaxy perspective. Okay, <laughs> we, exoplanets are cool, right? Of course they're cool. There's, There's loads there. of this. Galaxies, galaxies are also cool. Yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Every, every galaxy <laughs> has cool. Billions of exoplanets. Cool. Yes. Well, we haven't detected them yet. Billion. I don't know if you can say that. Two hundred billion exoplanets. <laughs> That's true. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. Well, similar tutorials go to the other projects as well. Do you think they might get to... Yeah, I hope so. Mm. Um, the, the only... So, so yeah, so the, as we rebuild stuff, we'll definitely be doing more of this stuff. The, the difficulty is the time to write the course. For astronomy, we could probably find that time. Um, for the other projects, it might be a bit more difficult. What's nice about this thing <laughs> is, um, you know, lots of our scientists put lots of effort into their projects, but they don't all have time to do that. And but we've never really had a convincing reason, apart from saying, look, you should talk to the zoites. It's amazing and it's great fun and it's interesting. That's the joy of these projects. We've never had a stick. We've had a carrot to offer them and say, look, this this will improve your product. We've never had a stick. And I think in a world in which we have lots of projects. And not all of those projects will be on Zooniverse Home. Not all of those projects will always be promoted with news I think we could say to scientists, like, if you do these extra things, then that pushes you up the line. So I, we haven't really thought that through yet, but I think that, that that will be a really good way of getting more content and more information, and even things like getting scientists to hang out on talk. Like, you could imagine um, the front page of, look, so more and more of our traffic for our projects is coming from Zooniverse Home. So you can imagine if you wanted your project to be on, Zooniverse Home could be a rank list, and if you're, if, if, as a science team, you've been on talk, and you go to the top. Uh, so we can do things like that now, and I think that will be hugely helpful. Uh, it certainly gives me the kick I need to turn up on talk more often. Um, and if it works on me, then I think it'll probably work on other people. I think there'll be a lot of interest um, in this stuff from the science teams. I think yeah. I should point out that a lot of scientists get involved in Zooniverse science projects because they enjoy sort of the interface between science and yeah. and the community and, and are interested in education. I mean, I think, you know, so I think there'll be a lot of enthusiasm yeah, yeah. for it. It's just, yeah, like Chris said, time is the... Yeah, yeah, but, but no, yeah. It, it, what the key point is it doesn't really need any more... Programmer, so we're always limited by how much web developer time we have and what we promise the web developers will do. But because of the standby system, that doesn't matter anymore. So it's just a case of the content, which is great. We could also pull. It'd be fun to think about using Wikipedia. Maybe I wonder what you could get from Wikipedia to create a course out of. You know, there are already lots of excellent astronomy articles, and that might be an interesting way to do it. Then it stays up to date as well, in theory. Yeah. So. I wanted to, one thing I wanted to say today, actually, strangely, uh, just, strangely. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shikrap Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the, there's a strong connection between Wikipedia and Galaxy Zoo, because on the first day, we got loads of traffic for the BBC News article, but on the second day, most of our traffic came from Wikipedia, because we were on the front page <laughs> of Wikipedia. And so, so there's this strong connection that goes back about seven years yeah. now. But it's not just that. Like I spend, because I'm a geek and kind of also in my job, I spend a lot of time looking at the top sources of traffic towards all of our sites. And Wikipedia is constantly in the top uh, ten for parallel sites for Galaxy Zoo, ah. but not for any of the other projects. Just, just Galaxy Zoo. Okay. Uh, so it still has that kind of strong relationship. With it. Is that coming from the Galaxy Zoo site page on Wikipedia? Yeah, or from the, not from the Zooniverse page, but from the Galaxy Zoo page on Wikipedia. I get a lot of my site from the Wikipedia page, but I'm bored as well. Right, okay. Oh. Well, that's, yeah, there's, there's, a list, there's a Zooniverse page with a list, but yeah, Galaxy Zoo is one of the only ones yeah. with, a, with a nice little yeah. page, and that's partly... Thanks, Rick. Amongst others. Maybe one more. with the other project is that there's no papers that you can cite. Yeah. There's nothing to yeah. reference to. So yeah, yeah. We're working on that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are some really nice universe papers to read. There's an Andromeda Project paper and a Space Warps paper, both of which are nearly finished, and both of which are fabulous. Uh, might see if I can find drafts and, and show them around later. Maybe what, if all the answers are this, I'll probably have time for one more. Do you think? Are there any answers? My phone was going. Anyone? Ooh. Had any questions on Twitter? 
There are lots of people that talk about penguins on Twitter. Excellent. But the three of us will now do this. That's really good. That's, yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. Really <laughs> like Twitter. You do it. No, no. Anyone else? Okay. Well, so, so shall we adjourn upstairs and, and start the Wikipedia editing uh, part of the, the day? Cool. And um, people online, uh, we'll, I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, so you can thanks, people online. Bye. Bye, Al. <laughs>